Good morning. We are going to start the session today. Um, before going uh, to, to the details of the, the project, the action that we want to present today, I would give the, the, the stage to Filippo, who is going to explain us how to uh, work, how to interact with this web webinar. Hello, hello, Christina. Thank you, hello, everyone, and thanks to attend this webinar on IPA for SME. Uh, I'm Filippo De Fabrizio, and I am part of Gopacom, a communication agency based uh, in Brussels. We deal with institutional communication for the European institutions and the agencies. Um, I'm going to spend a few words uh, on the rules and the ways uh, you have to interact with us the, uh, during the webinar. Uh, first of all, uh, the webinar is recorded, to, uh, so you can find the entire session on YouTube after the end of the webinar. Um, and then uh, you can, uh, con we, we can continue our discussion there, maybe in the comments and so on. Uh, and uh, during the webinar, so you have uh, basically uh, the possibility to interact with us uh, using the uh, uh, questions section. Uh, you can find it uh, on the uh, right side of your screen uh, below the polls section. So basically you can uh, uh, click on it and post your question there and uh, we, um, we will collect all uh, your questions uh, and uh, we will answer at the very end uh, one by one. So this is pretty much it from my side. Uh, uh, Christina, you can start the webinar. Okay, good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Filippo. Um, well, here uh, I will be helped by uh, Francisco, my colleagues and, and Marco as well for the, for the presentation of the ideas uh, to you today. Uh, uh, we have a, a general content, but additionally, we, we, we are going to present some of the frequently asked questions that we have received until now that are already published as well. And, uh, and we, we want to, to interact with the questions that can be open um, during the webinar session. So the action is, uh, is, uh, is called IP for SME, uh, meaning uh, that uh, we are, we are providing assistance to, to SMEs for, for IP valorization and this is an action that uh, was designed and, and was uh, started by the European Commission, in, pa in particular by, by the COSME program and that is being implemented by a consortium We also have a third party, which is the, the University of Alicante, and the three of, uh, of, of the organizations we are implementing since, uh, since one year ago, the IPA for SME, through the different calls or cutoffs for the presentation of, uh, of uh, pro proposals, of the submission of, uh, of requests for support. Um, and uh, the, the webinar today, uh, actually, the objective is to uh, to the disseminate that we have the fourth cut-up open until the 26th of March, and uh, you're welcome to present your your uh, your uh, uh, proposal to the to the call. Um, so, uh, what services are we providing? We are providing services of two different natures. We are providing IP pre-diagnostic, and we are providing support for IP protection co-financing. Uh, the IP pre-diagnostic is free of charge and uh, is implemented by a team of experts that have been trained uh, previous to the action uh, by, by the uh, European Commission. Uh, there is a team of experts represented in uh, 11 different countries that we are going to name later. And um, this is uh, uh, for the beneficiaries, uh, SMEs, this uh, service is free of charge, meaning that uh, we are in charge of uh, paying directly to the experts and uh, the service will be um, 
the creation of a customized strategy for you as an SME, considering the, the, the interaction with the, with the expert, with the personal interviews, with the, with the knowledge of your business assets for, for that could be protected under IP um, uh, registration, and uh, they, they will deliver to you a, a specific analysis that uh, we call IP pre-diagnostic pre report. Um, and then there is a, another type of, uh, another nature of services that will be for the co-financing of uh, uh, IP protection, and there will be a partial reimbursement of the cost associated for to this registration. Uh, in this uh, case, we have two different types of services. We are going uh, to have the possibility of reimbursement for the IPO fees, so we are talking about the uh, European protection uh, under the European Patent Office, uh, European Patent Office applications, and the amount will be of the co-financing for the EPO fees will be 75% until a limit of 2,500 euros per patent application, and each SME uh, could have the possibility to reach a maximum of five applications. There is another type of reimbursement that we can provide, that is the reimbursement for the IP attorney that is supporting you for the for the EPO registration. And uh, here we will have a, a maximum of 50% uh, co-financing until a limit of uh, 2,000 uh, euros. Um, and the, this uh, EPO attorney has to be a professional entitled to act before the EPO. So there is a, a, let's say, a database with the specific names of the professionals that uh, uh, can, be, can support you and uh, that is shared um, in, in the information that we provide you as, uh, as uh, um, in the guide for applicants. Um, and there is no limit in the number of applications for the service uh, per, per company, though uh, each application uh, has to be related to a unique patent uh, per, per application. Um, what, uh, what are the profile of the potential beneficiaries of the action? We are talking about innovative SMEs and until now the way to identify the innovative SMEs for the action is uh, through the uh, uh, seal of excellence that uh, you receive from the H2020 SME instrument. Um, um, and uh, well, the, the date of the seal of excellence is, is important because uh, uh, the date has to be, uh, the, the award has to be uh, a maximum of three years prior, prior to the cutoff, to the date of the cutoff. So this is something that we check for the eligibility. Uh, we also check uh, your uh, consideration as SME under the European uh, uh, legislation, meaning fewer than 250 uh, um, workers and uh, the turnover not exceeding the, four, the 50 million euros and, and uh, an annual balance uh, sheet total not exceeding the 40, 43 million euros. Uh, we also check that uh, your company is registered uh, in Europe or an, in a cosmic country. Um, and, um, and for the pre-diagnostics, uh, as I mentioned before, the countries that are uh, given this service uh, are only these 11 names, Austria, Denmark, France, Germany, Greece, Ireland, Italy, Latvia, Netherlands, Spain and Sweden. So service one is not available for the countries are out of these 11. Um, for the application steps, uh, my colleague is going to present you the general ideas. Hello, this is Francisco. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for attending the webinar. Um, mm, here, well, it's a, a very, very simple representation of, of what the the application process is uh, and the way we thought it, uh, and the basic and, and what we try to convey to you in this picture is that uh, we we have tried to make it as simple as possible uh, in order for us to uh, to capture the, the the essential things that we need to know from you, which are basically eligibility and and some um, overall information about the company. So, uh, so um, what, what I'd like to, to tell you is that uh, that uh, 
this is not absolutely not a complicated application process. It's on the on the contrary, it's it's a very simple one, um, um, that can be done in in about 15-20 minutes. Uh, all we are asking from you is some general information, uh, and and as I said, some a uh, couple of documents that are that allow us to check that uh, you are eligible as a company uh, to to be part of this program, which is this that, that you have a seal of excellence uh, provided by the well. SME instrument and now now what is called the EIC European Innovation Council um, accelerator. So they have changed the name or we have changed the name, but the, 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 the essence is the same. You could have also, also a seal of excellence from, from the SME instrument from from a couple of years ago. Maximum is three years, as we just said. Uh, and we also ask you to provide us with the with the evaluation summary report with evaluation of the project of the proposal that was provided or awarded with the seal of excellence. So those are basically the two documents we're, we're, uh, uh, we check or we, we need to check and we need from you. You have simply uh, have to upload it in the in the platform we have enabled and put at your disposal for your application and, and that, that would be basically it. So uh, so register you of course we need to we need you need to register in, in the in the um, in the uh, electronic uh, in the in the web platform that we, we put uh, at your disposal for for the application process you, you register you 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 fill some some information data you upload the, the couple of documents i was uh, seal of excellence i was i was referring to uh, and the evaluation summary report and you just press uh, the submit the submission button and and, and that would be it uh, so basic message is that it's very very simple all you need to, to do is to check um, that you have the information, the documents that we asked you to, um, and uh, of course you, that you probably previously read the guide for applicants, which is also a very simple document and not uh, very long, and 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 and, and also planify and plan, plan plan yourself because uh, we we this is a, this is a program that's been running for one year, as Christina was saying, and and the the, the, the concept basic concept we have put uh, forward is that it is it's a kind of a continuous open call. For applications with a specific cut-off dates every two three months. So uh, the next one uh, is uh, 26th of March, and on 26th of March we will collect all the applications we have uh, until that time. We will evaluate the eligibility and we will uh, well uh, inform the applicants uh, of their selection. Uh, and uh, so you can plan if 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 you can think if if uh, because there are some conditions for then then afterwards for 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 the for the reimbursements and for the services and and you can check if, if is this timing is, is is appropriate for to you or you can wait to the next to the next cutoff date. Uh, so I was saying uh, this um, this uh, fourth cutoff date was open uh, or, or was launched on December twentieth until the twenty sixth of March this year. Uh, so you have time to plenty of time to to check. Uh, Everything uh, and, and and to proceed with the submission because I was saying it was it is a very simple one. Uh, you can follow us on 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 Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn uh, on on uh, news, uh, events, and, and and information that we publish there in relate in relation to to um, IP and uh, the European Patent Office. And uh, well, that that'll be it for for the moment. Uh, as an introduction of, of, of the program, uh, we, we will proceed now with, with some of the well, most uh, relevant or the, the questions that, uh, apart from, from, from basic things that uh, are already well, or, or, you know, published, uh, we, we, we just highlight some, some of the most important questions that might, you might have uh, and we were going to to go through them, okay. And then, uh, as 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 Filippo and Gopal was saying, we will go through some other questions you might have at the end of this webinar. Uh, and and uh, maybe we can proceed with the first one, which is, uh, as you can read, uh, though having a seat of excellence, an SME uh, won later uh, 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 later on an H2020 SME instrument project. Would this company still be eligible for for support? Uh, the thing is that um, there are some uh, some restrictions. Uh, so, uh, and, and the answer is which have uh, SMEs that have received financing for 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 a phase two 
kind of a project, a SME instrument now called, uh, as I was saying, EIC Accelerator, uh, are not eligible for support, okay, at this time. So, so, but there are no restrictions for phase one funding. So, if even if you even if you have received funding from phase one, and you still have, of course, you still have a, 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 a younger than three years a seat of excellence, you, you're perfectly eligible. To, to participate or to be a beneficiary of, of, of this program. Um, then we go uh, to question number two. Uh, some of you, uh, some of you um, have asked uh, that we have a so we have a seal of excellence, excellence, and filed a patent already. Can we be beneficiary to receive reimbursement from from the program if we already filed a patent or? The patent submission date should be after the application at this, at, at this program. The, this is one that, that this is this is the reason I was telling you that uh, you need to plan uh, well carefully uh, when when you apply because there's going to be like two or three more opportunities during this year 2020 to to apply to this program because we can only reimburse costs so service two and service three. Christina was presenting at the at the beginning, uh, uh, costs incurred uh, after we have uh, you have uh, you have uh, made an application to to our program, and uh, particularly or more specifically after the date in which we have communicated to you that that your application was successful. Okay, so we can only reimburse costs uh, that that are dated after that that moment. Okay, so if you have some past Cost maybe a couple of months ago or maybe just yesterday uh, related to e European Patent Office uh, uh, fees uh, or uh, uh, IP attorney fees, uh, uh, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, take those costs into consideration because the rules that are was given to us from the program uh, designing are the, that uh, this cost has to be has to be dated after after that. Uh, IP for SME application. So, so that's why we were saying, of course, that this is not uh, mm, the, you can uh, you can apply. It's important to know that you can in your application you can select which of the three services you want to to be awarded with. Uh, every okay, so you can say, okay, I will go first to to IP prior diagnostic in case I, I'm uh, a company located in one of these eleven countries. Uh, Christina was mentioning before. And then in the next cutoff, which will come in May, June, uh, I don't remember at this moment, you can apply for uh, for service two and service three. And you you can maybe have a, a, a initial, uh, you know, support and and a, and, in, uh, and a report on on, on what to do, uh, or maybe you already know what to do. But uh, in, uh, I was what I was saying that that is it's, it's, it, this is very important to not to waste some some time because there are some 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 questions there. Um, well, it's another thing that may happen is that uh, people well don't don't remember they have a seal of excellence or can can find it because this is a mandatory for us and and for you to 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 provide us with this very document which is uh, usually a PDF that is provided by European Commission when 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 uh, it issues the results of our uh, SM instrument or EIC accelerator to the companies so. Uh, so everyone, every company that has ever submitted a proposal to the H2020 SME Instrument Program should be able to check if it has been awarded a set of excellence by logging into the participant portal. So you go with your credentials into the participant portal to the web portal of the European Commission. You go to my proposals, uh, you click on follow up under the actions button corresponding to, to, to the proposal in question. And then uh, on, when you click on process documentation there, if you have a seal of excellence, it should be there. Okay, so it's, 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 it's so it's yes or no. If there's no seal of excellence document there, then the SME you you were not awarded. You might also have that into in, in an email that was sent to you. But in in case you cannot find it because this is something that sometimes happens, you can go to the web platform of the European Commission and check if you have that. And if you have an seal of excellence, it should be there because this this is documents are are not uh, deleted or or you know or sent to the to the to the dust. Yeah, just to mention that we are for the application we will need to receive both the ESR and the 
and the seal of excellence and uh, both uh, has to be related to the same proposal mm -hmm. in some cases we are when we are checking eligibility the, there is a difference between the number of the project or number of the proposal in the seal of excellence and the number of the proposal in the ESR, there has to be the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and, and one, one thing that some, some, sometimes confuses people is that uh, mm, the, the technology or know-how that uh, can be protected or you're looking for to be protected via an European patent um, does not initially have to to do anything with the um, with the SME instrument proposal that you send to the European Commission. Okay, this is only a way to guarantee that you are a, an innovative uh, and, and, and a technology-based company uh, with 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 certain level of, of quality. Uh, okay, so so um, all we uh, uh, so all we need from you is that you are a, a SME instrument uh, program participant. Or you were, and you were qualified as a as a really good company by the uh, issue of, of issuing of of our uh, seal of excellence, and that's it. So uh, sometimes the people ask, "Oh, does my my patent have to do with the project I presented?" And uh, and actually later on, I I was awarded with phase one and so on. In, in principle, it does not. Uh, it's, 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 it's only a way for us to know that, ensure that you are a, a, an active, uh, innovative innovation company, and 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 uh, so uh, and that will be for us. As long as we have a seal of excellence, when awarded to a proposal that you um, that you sent to this program, uh, it's okay for us. And as Christina was saying, uh, the only requirement is that these those documents, these both documents, refer to the same proposal. So people, people sometimes they they send us an ESR from one proposal, and the and the and the seal of excellence was awarded to another proposal. And for us, uh, that is not correct. It has to be the same. That is not eligible. Okay. So if you if you apply, please check that those both documents refer to the same to the same proposal, the same moment when you submitted a a, a project to the SME instrument program. Once a company has submitted an IP for SME application, what process does it have to follow if selected for support? Well, that, that depends on on the services that you that you uh, ask in the in the application. Okay, so you, as I said, you can you could have asked for service one, you could have only, you could have asked for service two only, service three only, or for the three of them or a couple of them. Uh, it's, it's it's free to you to you to do. To do so, in, in case uh, you are a company based on on those eleven countries we we, we said before, and uh, you select the service one, uh, well, you, all you have to do is 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 to to be uh, wait and to be contacted either uh, by us as coordination center or, or by the national uh, IP office, which is sometimes the the responsible who's in charge of of um, coordinating and assigning the experts we also were referring earlier the expert that will be assigned to you uh, uh, are many times coordinated by the ip office in your country and sometimes in some other cases it's us as coordination center we, we who um, who uh, who gives you the uh, or takes the first step uh, so you have to if in, in in both cases you have to wait and and see uh, who is contacting you and who's uh, demanding you some some something to do. Uh, the scheduling of the IP pre-diagnostic will be a matter of, of a coordination between you and the expert. One once you have selected or once you have been assigned with an expert. Okay, from that moment on, you will have to uh, to uh, agree on 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 on, on uh, a meeting and and on on the service delivery from from that moment. For for the cases of service two and service three. Um, well, uh, after selection, uh, you are free to provide us with uh, with the, the. Actually, there's nothing to be done uh, from from our side. It's, it's, it's all, all, all uh, everything's on your on your side. So you can start uh, requesting reimbursement from the day after. Okay. So if you have an invoice or you have a, some cost the day after, we communicate it to you the selection or your approval of of your IP for SME application. You can already uh, ask for reimbursement. 
of course, as I was saying, the, the dates yeah. of the documentation have to be after. So, uh, but that 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 that's um, the thing is the message is that you you can you can start uh, you can start providing or asking for reimbursement from the day after. Uh, Time limitation. Of course, we once once is there any time limitation for justifying or for presenting the APO and IP attorney fees, so service two and service three, after you've been selected? Yes, we we cannot we cannot hold this uh, or keep these things uh, on hold for forever, and uh, the unreasonable timing for 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 um, for you and, and for us to receive your the, the required documentation to be able to. Re to be reimbursed is, is has been set up, uh, up set up in four months. Okay, set four months. You so um, what, what I was saying before of just um, from the day after you have four months to provide us with uh, with the first documentation to activate uh, either of the services. Um, and then once you activate, meaning that once you ask for the first reimbursement, you will have until the end of next year to 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 do the the, the second one because you, you're going to have only two two opportunities to uh, reach the maximum amount of of support from our side. Okay. But but that that will come after. But this is also important for you to know that you have a kind of a time limitation uh, to. That that also refers to the to what I was saying about planning your your costs and planning your IP activities for the for this year, okay? Because you're going you only you will only have four months to uh, to react to our approval and and, and to re receive the reimbursement. Six question is: I'm already working with an IP attorney. Uh, are his or her costs reimbursable? Uh, reimbursable? Uh, well, uh, this happens many times. The people are asking, "Well, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm already working with this this guy or this uh, woman here, and I've been working for many years." Uh, and the, 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 but the conditions are that, uh, that he or she has to be entitled to act in front in front of the EPO. So, and there's a list. You see the link there. There's a link. Yeah, and, and uh, well, in, regarding these two questions, five and six, and. Uh, what is uh, how it, they are applied to service one? In the case of service one, the the activation has uh, also a deadline of the of the four months. Actually, uh, the the service one should be provided uh, uh, in these four months, meaning that the the final report has to be delivered to you uh, in in these four months. And uh, for the for the let's say the professional that can uh, um, provide this. Uh, Service one is only the ones that have been trained uh, in these 11 countries. Is is not cannot be someone outside this list of, of experts. Uh, cannot be someone with whom you have been already working with your, your IP strategy. So uh, in some of the countries, these experts are represented by the IP national offices, and in some others there are um, free free experts. But it's, uh, it's, it's a list, uh, let's say a closed list, that from, from the from the people that have been trained with the with the corresponding methodology defined by by Cosne. So uh, we need to check with you um, before starting the the service one provision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So exactly. In, in summary, there are some there are, there are some restrictions or or limitations in 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 the in the kind of uh, in the kind of Persons you 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 work in, you you will be need to be working with to to with the services for service one it's a closed list of experts okay you have to you, in, in many cases you 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 have uh, options to select uh, but it's a closed list from you which you you select and and for service two or service three uh, there has to be someone entitled to act before the EPO or in, uh, so this list obviously is is is, is longer. Uh, there's there's a the database is made of thousands of people. Uh, it might be the case that the ones you're working with uh, are not in that list. You will you 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 will have to you're gonna have to wait to work with with somebody uh, in that list. Actually, these these uh, professionals can help you for the both for the service two and the service three. So both for the APO fees and and for their their own um, remuneration. Yeah. 
So uh, it's important that you check uh, that the person that is supporting you is in this list, uh, and, and this is this will help a lot for the for the um, delivery of the service two and three. I mean, the, we try not to have too many rules, but uh, this uh, this uh, um, selection of professionals, both for service one and service two and three, this uh, selection of uh, of the dates, the limitation of deadlines, uh, because we don't want to to have an amount of money reserved for a company that, that is just submitted and is not going to be active until the end of the action. We, not, we need to, to provide this, this money to, other, to help other SMEs that uh, really wants to, to start the, the service. That's the only reason for, for uh, provide, providing deadlines. Uh, but for the rest, we want, we want to have a really uh, active services and easy for you uh, to, to activate and to somehow to be remunerated with the, with the co-financing. Uh, question seven refers to uh, are, are all types of patents eligible to be subject uh, of, of our program? This is a, this is a question also very important because uh, well, maybe because uh, people don't don't read the rules or or but uh, uh, or just want to uh, take more benefit. But uh, our support exclusively covers European patent registration processes, so everything that has to be related with. Um, uh, well, meaning I'm referring here, we're referring here to service two and service three, so reimbursement of costs. Service one is, is something that can, uh, that, uh, so that report, expert report and recommendations for, for uh, IPS strategy in your company can refer to anything, of course, to anything, uh, uh, to any scope, worldwide scope. But reimbursement of costs, so co-financing, we will only give uh, financing or reimbursement to, to activities related in the framework or European patent registration processes. So service two and service and specific fi uh, APO fees that are uh, that are to be paid by you. So no cost for IP protection include uh, in countries like US, China, Canada, uh, Canada or and etc. will be covered. Okay, so. Not even those processed through, uh, through, through the airport mechanisms like the PC, PCT for outside Europe countries. Okay, this is only for uh, this is only for again for European patent. Uh, so EPO patents, European patents uh, to be protected, uh, IP protected in in European countries. Eligible. Okay, and these are these are the codes. For instance, for service two, the codes of uh, of the fees that are charged by the European patent when you start the process or when you're in the process. Uh, so we cover code one, two, five, six, um, seven, and thirty-three, and those are only the the, the type of co fees that we we co-finance or we reimburse to you. Okay, um, before going to uh, uh, the idea of that. Uh, Per application, we are we are waiting um, uh, to have the, this uh, fees for the same patent. But if you have different patents, you just need to submit uh, different applications in our in our website. Uh, some can be for the same cutoff, or you can, uh, depending on the on your own management of IP, it will it will correspond. It could correspond to different cutoffs. Exactly. That is important because uh, this is something that we also find uh, in, in, during justification of um, every 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 IP or every IP for SME application that you that you do is related has to be related to to one uh, European patent uh, process or, or, or potential European patent that you will be awarded by the office. Okay, so. Uh, so, but it might be the case that you, in, in your portfolio or in your in your company, you might have two, three, four, or even more uh, potential European patents. Uh, but and if, and if it's the case, you can, as you can see here, this is, it will be limited to five. So you you will have to make another application to a program to another AP patent, a, a European patent, and and another to if you have an, a third one. So every, every single every single IP for SME application refers to only one patent, uh, and if you have many uh, more, you you will have to uh, you can you will have to and you can uh, apply to us more than once. 
okay? But uh, afterwards, when you justify and you present the documentation, everything has to be uh, related to one. Yeah, and, and related to the services that you uh, you have from the from the IP uh, attorney professional, uh, we also uh, consider the case when after the, the analysis from the IP attorney, the conclusion is that uh, they, uh, they recommend you not to uh, go for the registration. So you will see in the guide for applicants that we, there is also the possibility of uh, uh, having the, the reimbursement of the professional fees from the IP attorney, even if, the, if you are not going uh, for the registration. Yeah, because the spirit, the spirit of, of, of the service three, uh, IP attorney fees, Reimbursement is that that uh, that you you receive uh, the advice of an attorney in relation to a potential uh, IP European patent, and and the, and and we what we do is we cover the partially the, the cost of that service. The service might be studying, analyzing documentation, and give you some advice. And and the the conclusion of that advice or that working with you is that that there is no sense of of for whatever reason, that to make a, a, a European patent application. Still, for us, is that okay? Because this is part of the advice you received, and we're going to to uh, reimburse the, the cost partially of the cost of that advice. Okay, so don't worry if 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 the, the conclusion of the attorney is that no, maybe not this time, maybe next year, or maybe not for this technology, maybe for another one. Uh, because we, 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 the intention of the service is to cover partially the, the service, the advice of the IP attorney in relation again to a potential European patent. So, so that is important. Huh? So, if, if he's doing some other things, if he's doing some uh, studies to uh, patent in Canada, because we found that in, uh, currently in some of the cases we have already in our portfolio, uh, this is not eligible. This is not. I'm sorry. Even if it, the patent is uh, entitled to act before the EPO or whatever, if it's working for you to study how to make a, a patent in Canada, this is not. The, those costs are not eligible. But, but if he's doing that in 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 the in the case of a repair patent, to check if he do it in Germany and Austria at the same time, whatever, papa, that that advice is what we that what we cover. Okay, that is important. Uh, and let's go to back to. To the last question, well, maybe you can express it. Well, the, it, it, it's really, the question number eight relates to service one, and uh, the steps are well explained, including diagrams for, in, the, in the guide for applicants uh, to make you easier to understand. But the, the IP pre diagnostic, uh, as I was explaining, is provided by an expert. Uh, and uh, that is going to analyze your uh, your existing technology. Uh, it's going to analyze your knowledge assets, and uh, and it's going to provide you uh, advice and recommendations on how to uh, create your own IP business strategy. That is is going to be uh, free of charge. The the um, the expert is assigned in in some countries by the IP national office by proximity because. Uh, the, uh, in most of the cases, there will be uh, a first um, initial meeting with the, with the experts, and there will be an interaction with you, as, as many interactions as needed. Um, and uh, um, uh, in some of the, of the cases, the, the, well, the expert is selected by you for other countries. We are going to provide you uh, with a, a list of uh, experts, including uh, a short CV, so you can you can know if there is a, any conflict of interest that we are also uh, finding in, in our activity. And, and then there will be a, a, a visit, there will be an interaction, there will be an analysis from the from the expert about your technology business and uh, your, uh, your somehow your your own strategy, markets, uh, business model, and so on. And uh, they, they will provide you with a, with a report that is being supervised by a by a quality check from a third person, and that is also uh, somehow uh, controlled and, uh, under the supervision of the of the European Commission. Um, uh, and there will be also we are following uh, the, the 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 service by a satisfaction uh, analysis uh, uh, on the services. That why uh, in some in, well, usually we, we are waiting from your uh, a survey a short survey about how 
what's the process and if you feel comfortable, if there's something that we can, uh, you recommend us to improve uh, because, well, this is the, the first, uh, for this year, it was the first uh, time this action uh, was run. So we are still in, in uh, preparing improvements and uh, we are listening to your uh, feelings and your uh, experience with the different uh, services uh, from one to three. So, um, well, this was uh, the presentation we prepared uh, for today, but probably we got uh, additional questions uh, during the webinar and we uh, uh, ask for the support of GOPA uh, in uh, processing the, the, the questions received during this time. Unmuted. Thank you, Christina. My name is uh, Joan Lanfranco and I also work for GOPA. And uh, we have a few questions. Um, uh, from from the attendees, um, the first one uh, asks uh, if uh, they can reimburse the EPO fees and the IP attorney, or if they have to choose between uh, options between these two options. Um, no, no, you 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 can choose between these two options or not. You you can you can, I mean. The, 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 Best way to do it is to choose the both options, and we can perfectly reimburse the cost of that uh, a eventual potential uh, European patent. Uh, the, we can reimburse the cost of the European Patent Office and the cost of the advice of the AP attorney, uh, at both both costs at the same time. I mean, in the same uh, in the same let's say IP for SME uh, application. So you, you can. Uh, the, 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 the best way to do it for you would be to to, um, to uh, ask ask for both reimbursements. The, the, the timing is important, as, uh, of course, and that's why maybe the, your question is in is in, in that line. Uh, since since there will be a, a time limitation, uh, that's again that, that's what I was saying that to to, to plan perfectly to plan that uh, you can maybe opt to uh, to because this is also a, a way to act is you can ask uh, to you can uh, apply to us for support reimbursement of a ip attorney first in one cut off date maybe this 26th of march and so you have time to work with the attorney uh, to who he does or she does uh, his work and we reimburse partially that dot cost and for the next cut off you can ask for support to the f office once you started to interact with the European Patent Office, but if you if you think you can manage uh, that uh, process, uh, IP attorney and APO fees within four or six months, everything together, you you can perfectly uh, apply to both reimbursements at the same time. Okay. Thank you. Um, the next question asks um, if uh, the EPO application application has to be per country or for Europe as a whole? No, it has to be at least for two can EU member states. Okay, so it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a European patent covering all the geographical area of Europe. It, it, it has to cover at least two, uh, two EU member countries. Okay, so that, that's minimum. Uh, and that's, that's uh, that those are the conditions, yeah. So it doesn't have to be a, a patent cover in all Europe. No, no. Okay. Um, another question says, I guess related to this one, if two countries also counts as two applications. No. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Okay. I mean, no, no. If if it's only related to one IP for SME, one of our programs application, you can. Uh, but but you will be you won't be uh, uh, complying with the rules of two at least two member states. But but two, two countries does not count as two applications. No, it's one one APO application covering two countries. Yeah. Um, one user uh, one applicant sorry um, says that uh, they did not get to the next phase with reimbursements, so they would like to know how to react how to activate this. Sorry, what was that again? Um, they say they did not get to the next phase with reimbursement, so maybe they had some issue with uh, activation. So how how, how ah. to activate the, the reimbursement? 
I mean, if they reach the deadline without presenting any documents, meaning activating any of the services two and three, that means that they need to reapply yeah, they need to, to the reapply. open. We have simplified quite a lot the, the, the reapplication process for the ones that already applied, meaning that uh, uh, we have the, the, the main documents uh, and uh, it's, it's already in our EMS system, the management system, and the reapplication process is uh, simpler than the, than the initial process. Yeah, but it, it, well, if, even though the initial process is simple, as I said, well, it's only 15, 20 minutes. Uh, for re reapplying, it's even uh, simpler. So, but but this the, this company will have to re uh, reapply, and uh, uh, without any penalization. I mean, they, they will they will go into the into the list or a bunch of other companies and. If uh, if if we there's a uh, budget enough for us, uh, they will be they will be awarded again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's no there's no p penalty here for for not uh, complying with the with the limit time limitations the first time. If if you think you now you can uh, comply with those limitations, uh, uh, you, you can perfectly reapply and you would most probably be awarded again. Uh, and and now you you can do it uh, even faster. And, and it's good for us. I mean, we, 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 we want to do that. So that would be the last question from uh, attendees. OK. OK, thank, thank you very much for, for your time. Uh, this is just uh, uh, to have a quick view of the action. Uh, we, everything that we have been explaining is uh, documented and uh, accessible through the website ip4sme.eu plus uh, don't forget that we have a, a an email address for the for the help desk uh, both for the general applicants uh, and for the for the already uh, awarded companies uh, the, we are we try to be really active because uh, as you, ca you can imagine questions are being repeated so though, i mean this uh, we, we try to be really quick in the answers uh, really quick when there is something going on for the starting of the service one and and the communication with the with the experts and in that sense uh, we are supporting you uh, in any in anything you need um, including uh, any recommendation of, of improvement that can help us in in providing a better service I would like also to insist on on, on, on the planning on the different services and, and and giving you the perspective of that this action is going to last until the end of 2021. So, so um, we can you can perfectly take a, a slow action of you know if it's the first time apply to service one, see what is going, what is this going, what is this all about, see let an expert get into into the company and and and, and see what is the, the strategy and what what are the, his or her recommendations on on IP protection, and then. And then apply for for reimbursement if you if you start working with uh, so the natural process would be service one service three and then service two so uh, IP IP pre diagnostic then start working with a uh, with an IP attorney and then apply to the EPO mm -hmm. uh, of course this is not the case of every SME some some of the companies they 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 really have a an ongoing and and they've been working with this in in the past and have a really straightforward process and, and everything can come together within some few months and, and if, if it's that the case you can apply for all three services at the same time and and, and, and benefit the most of, of, of our support uh, again for one patent if you have more patents you will have to do the same to, to another application in our program and to and to and to uh, you know mobilize the, the, the mechanisms of, of justification and to extract the, the best of, 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 of our support as well so so you have plenty of opportunities and plenty of ways of, um, you know, planning uh, you, uh, our support to you. So, uh, so that that that'll be that'll be it. So, so it's it's important to for you to know this that you you will go. We, we have nine cutoff dates. We, this is the fourth. So we have uh, even five more uh, during the next months. So, it, and we have plenty. And, and it's true that we have plenty of uh, of budget. Of, um, plenty of budget in total. We we have to we have to divide it in cut off dates and so on. But there is a lot of opportunity. So don't rush. 
uh, just think about it and there's plenty of opportunities in cut-off dates uh, during this year and next year. So, uh, so because the intention, the background intentions that that you that that you extract the, uh, that that you really um, put forward an IP protection strategy in your company because it's, it is proven that is uh, that it is it is uh, it is a, a way a good way to uh, to be competitive and to ensure that that uh, that the core technology and the core know-how inside the company is um, can can get the best out of of it uh, and as for a business. Uh, um, for a business uh, exploitation on your side, so so um, and then we are here to to help you out with this as much as we can, and so so yeah, so go for it, and and we hope to see many applications in this fourth cut of date as well as we already had in the past ones. Well, so that's, that's all for now, uh, for today. Um, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.